peace and welcome. In today's episode, we are peeling back the curtain on the composer behind the soundtrack of the Resident Evil Director's Cut DualShock Edition. The year was 1996 and the gaming world was introduced to Resident Evil, a game that became legendary. Then in 1998, the Director's Cut DualShock version made its debut, complete with a new soundtrack. So sit back, relax, and let's get this started. This new and updated soundtrack was credited to composer Mamoru Samuraguchi. He was born on the 21st of September 1963 in Hiroshima, Japan. By the age of four, he was playing the piano, so his musical background goes all the way back to the late 1960s. While a teenager, he suffered from migraine headaches, and as they gradually worsened, he stated that he lost his hearing. He was completely deaf by the time he was 35 years old, around 1999 while working on Onimusha Warlords. However, that didn't stop him from composing music. His resume contained symphonies, movie soundtracks, and yes, video games too. He was a celebrated composer. It's not very often that a deaf person composes music. One can't help but think of Beethoven, which led to his newfound nickname, the Digital Age Beethoven, a modern composer who wasn't hampered by his disability. Something I think many people can not only look up to, but also admire at the same time. This led to him being quite popular, and often in the media. So much so, that in 2001 he was interviewed by Time Magazine, where he said, If you trust your inner sense of sound, you create something that is truer. It is like communicating from the heart. Losing my hearing was a gift from God. In 2013, he was featured in a TV documentary by the NHK, titled, Melody of the Soul, The Composer Who Lost His Hearing. You can find it on YouTube, at least the first part, but the quality is low. 240p is the best option, and there's no subtitles, so watch at your own will. In his 2007 autobiography titled Symphony No. 1, Mamoru tells us about a dream he had the night he lost his hearing. I was sitting on a beach at night, alone, holding my knees. I stood up and walked into the sea until the water came up to my neck. All I could hear was the sound of waves crashing on the shore. At that moment, something grabbed my ankles and started pulling me under. I struggled to swim to the surface, but kept sinking. The sound became smaller and smaller as the water entered my ears. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe anymore, and I lost consciousness. It was then that I woke up. He got out of bed and went to his keyboard to play some notes, but he heard nothing. I realized the keyboard wasn't on and I thanked God. So he powered it on and struck the keys again, but the result was the same. He smashed his ears with his fist and slammed his head into the wall. It knocked him out and when he came to, he found himself in a puddle of blood. He had a flesh wound on his knee all the way to the bone, but nothing mattered, he thought. It all sounds like a movie perfect scenario and a perfect story to tell, but many people had doubts, and this is where it all started to crumble. In June 2013, the magazine Era went to his home to conduct an interview. While there, Mamoru would do things like answer questions before the signer could even finish the question, meaning he may have heard the question when it was asked. He didn't even have to wait for the sign language. Furthermore, he stood up to answer his front door when the doorbell rang. The decision was made to not publish the interview due to the discrepancies. Fast forward to February 2014, and Mamoru's lawyer released a statement that said, Mamoru Samuragochi had someone else write his music for more than 10 years, which means Resident Evil DualShock, Onimusha Warlords, and a number of other pieces aren't even his. He wanted to be the Japanese Beethoven without actually making any music. You may wonder about the timing of the confession. It's more than a decade later and all of a sudden he wants to say something. Well, the ghost writer was tired of living the lie and he had an interview lined up with the magazine where he was ready to tell the story. And this man, the ghost writer, is Takashi Niigaki a teacher at the prestigious Toho Gakuen School of Music. 
He admitted he was paid 7 million yen, about 70,000 at the time, to write more than 20 pieces of music. Takashi continued on to say, Later I found out that he, Mamoru, can't even write musical scores. And in my opinion, that's the first step in being a modern Beethoven. And if that wasn't enough, the real bombshell came when he said he believes Mamoru isn't even deaf, stating, At first he acted to me also as if he had suffered hearing loss, but he stopped doing so eventually. Niigaki added that Momaru didn't even need to use his cane, as Samuragochi was often seen walking with a limp and assisted by a cane. Apparently this was all fake too. I personally believed he was deaf, because who else would release the basement theme and think, that's just perfect. He wanted people to believe he was Beethoven all the way down to making people think he was deaf. I'm deaf! But he couldn't write music, and he wasn't even deaf. The first two things, and really the only two things you need to do to make people link you to Beethoven. I personally prefer the original soundtrack and not the DualShock version. It features one of my favorite Resident Evil themes, the save room. That being said, the DualShock soundtrack isn't all bad. However, if you would like to avoid the new one, you can play the original Resident Evil game and the non-DualShock Director's Cut. For modern hardware, there's the GOG version. You can even play the 2002 remake and the 2015 remaster of said remake. These two games have new renditions of the original soundtrack. So that's the story and the lies behind the Resident Evil DualShock Edition soundtrack. Personally, I think the original Resident Evil soundtrack was just fine. It did not need to be replaced. Then, this is who you hire. That's a little bit of an L there by Capcom. I know they meant well, but it really didn't age well. If you want more videos like this where we basically just give updates on music news or stories, then let us know in the comments. And of course, last but never least, our Golden Tier Patrons Bersona, Quantum X, and MJJ. I am ICC, thanks for watching, peace.